don't start your pilot training until you get your medical certificate. You're gonna thank me for this one later. Getting your medical certificate knocked out before you start your pilot training is a must. It basically tells the FAA that you're not a medical risk and that you're healthy enough to fly. But a lot of student pilots, myself included, just started flying because flying is fun. But by the time they needed a medical certificate, they find out they don't qualify for one. So let's talk about what a medical certificate is all about. There are three types of medical certificates and they're broken down into classes. Which one you need depends on which type of flying you want to do. Third class is your recreational flyer. Second class is when you want to work as a pilot for money. And first class is when you want to be an airline pilot. If you're just starting your training, all you really need is your third class medical. But if you plan on making a career of flying, it would be a really good idea to get that first class medical to see if you qualify for it. That last part being really important. Some prospective pilots don't know that they have a medical condition or taking a prescription that disqualifies them from being a pilot. So let's go through the process of getting a medical certificate and I'll even tell you what they're testing for. First thing, paperwork. Get used to paperwork, it's how the FAA operates. Head on over to medexpress.faa.gov and create a user account. Then start a new application. And real quick, on any FAA application, always use your whole name as it's stated on your driver's license. Anyways, the application will ask all kinds of medical questions. Answer them to the best of your ability and then just hit submit. In the end, they'll give you a code that you'll need to provide to the doctor. And some doctors won't even let you set up an appointment without it. Speaking of doctors, now it's time to find one, but you don't just see any doctor for this. You have to see what's called an Aviation Medical Examiner, or AME. These doctors have been vetted by the FAA and are certified to issue medical certificates. Finding one is easy using the FAA search. You just need your city and state. Go ahead and pick one and set up an appointment. Oh, and you may want to ask about cost. Most insurances won't cover this exam and you'll probably have to pay for it out of pocket. All right, now it's time for the exam. This is the guidance given to aviation medical examiners for the medical certificates. It's really broken down into three major groups, vision, hearing, and physical. Starting with vision. To become a pilot, you need 20-40 vision in each eye separately with or without correction. No big deal if you need glasses. I happen to need them myself. This test is done with your basic read the chart style eye exam, 20 feet away for distance vision and 16 inches for near. Now, there are a few additional vision requirements for the second and first class medical on the distance you need 20-20, and if you're 50 or older, you need to have an intermediate vision test, which is 20-40 at 32 inches. The next part of the vision test is color. You'll need to be able to perceive colors necessary for safe performance of airman duties. This involves that little book of dots that has numbers built into them. Fairly easy test if you're not colorblind, but if you are, don't worry. It really comes down to how bad it is and more on that later. Moving on to the hearing test. The examiner has to check if you can hear the average conversation in a quiet room in both ears six feet away with your back turned to them. There's a number of ways that this can be done, but in my exam, the AME just had me repeat a call back to the tower. If you fail this type of hearing test, there's an additional hearing test. It's called the Autometric Speech Discrimination Test. And this is where they score the number of words you read back to them correctly through some headphones at a specific volume level. You just have to get at least 70% correct in order to pass. The last ear thing that they check for is to make sure you don't have some kind of inner ear disease or condition that can cause things like vertigo, disturbance of speech, or equilibrium. Next is the physical side of things, which is mostly focused on your heart. Your pulse has to be normal and your blood pressure has to be under control. There's no standard values for blood pressure, but it does have to be under 155 over 95. And blood pressure and pulse are taken the same way that they're taken at a normal doctor's office. So that should feel very familiar to you. Now, one difference for the first class medical applicants is the electrocardiogram. This is where the hook leads up to your body and take a look at the electrical impulses of your heart. It's only done once you turn 35, but after you're 40, it's necessary to get one every year. Last, something that's not on that cheat sheet I showed you is a urine test. And believe it or not, this is not a drug test. This is just to check to make sure you don't have diabetes or some kind of kidney disease. 
So that's what to expect at your medical exam. It's nothing crazy. But if you have a problem with any of these, it doesn't mean you can't be a pilot. It may mean that you need to change a prescription, have a medical test done, or have to work with the FAA on it, which is worst case scenario. But they give out special issue medical certificates all the time. It just takes more time to get through the process. And I know pilots who are deaf in one ear, blind in one eye, and are even colorblind, but not all at the same time. But here's some serious advice on it all. So listen up. If you have a medical condition or are taking a prescription that may disqualify you, see the AME for a consult first. I cannot stress this enough. Once you see the AME for your medical exam, they have to decide right then and there if you qualify and submit all of it to the FAA. You can save yourself a lot of headache going and getting things taken care of before you actually show up for the exam itself. Now, if you know that you have a disqualifying condition, do not go for your medical certificate. There are other ways for you to become a pilot, just not for a career. Check to the description down below for more information on that one. But just so we're clear here, there are a few disqualifying things that can keep you from getting a medical certificate. You can't have things like psychosis, bipolar disorder, personality disorders, substance dependence, or substance abuse. Also, just about anything related to your heart can stop things right in their tracks. And we're talking about things like heart disease, valve replacements, pacemakers, or even heart replacement. Epilepsy itself is a hard stop. And diabetes can stop you too, but it depends on which type. All right, we are almost done here. So here's some last bits of advice. Don't procrastinate your medical. Get it done before training if you can. Otherwise, you absolutely have to have it before you can solo in the plane. Next, not all AMEs are created equal. Some are just certified where others are pilot and aviation advocates who have the same goals that you do. So check with an instructor or your local flight school for recommendations. Last, stay up to date on your medical certificate. First class is good for 12 months if you're under 40 and six months if you're over 40. Second class is good for 12 months, no matter how old you are. And third class is good for 60 months if you're under 40 and 24 months if you're older than 40. Just make sure you carry it with you whenever you fly. Again, guys, if you even think you have a medical issue, do your research and have a consult first. Trust me. Anyways. That's it for this one. We hope that you found it helpful. Remember to share aviation wherever you can, and we'll see you in the next one.